Tell me more. I know I am Thane of Glance, but how of Cordor? The Thane of Cordor lives. Say, from whence you owe this strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such prophetic greeting? Speak, I charge you! Shall be kings when those that promised the thane of Cordor to me promise no less for them. But it is strange, and oftentimes to honest to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truth. Win us with honest trifles to betray us in the deepest consequence. <laughs> Cousin, uh, a word for you. Two truths are told, as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. I am thane of Cordor. Why do I yield to that suggestion, whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? My thoughts, whose murder yet is but fantastical, function smothers in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. Look how our part is wrapped. Chance may crown me. Why, chance may make me king without my stir. Kind gentlemen, your pains register when I could dare over time I leave to read them. Let us towards the king. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friends. Our estate upon our eldest 
surface, from hence to Inverness, and find us further for you. Yes, let that be. It will make honour for you. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife if you will approach. My worthy Cordial. Fame of Cordial. That is a step of which I must fall down, or else overleap. For in my way it lies. Stars hide your fires. Let not the light see my black and deep desires. The eye wink at the hand, yet let that be. When the eye fears what it has done, you see. True, worthy Banquo, he is full so valiant. Let's after him, whose care has gone before to bid us all welcome. It is a peerless kingdom.
serious enough, don't you come to you tonight? We will come. Tomorrow, as you promised. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see your face, my fame. It's like a book where men may read strange matters. So I welcome in your hand, your eye, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and shall put this mighty great business into my dispatch, that it shall for all our nights days to come, with solely sovereign sway, and master them. It will speak further. Only look up clear, the old favour ever fierce. Leave all the rest to me. Besides, this Duncan had borne his faculties so meek, and in his great office, and his virtues plead like angels, trumpet tongue, against the great damnation of his taking off. <laughs> I cannot prick the side of my intent, but only vaulting ambition that overleaps itself and falls on the other. And now, poor news. It's almost such. Why have you left the chamber? Have he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We have proceed no further in this business. He have honoured me of late, and I have brought golden opinions to all sorts of people, which should be worn in their newest gloss, or cast aside so soon. <laughs> but the hope is wrong, when you dress yourself. Has it slept since? From this time such I account thy love. Art thou feared? Be the same in thine own act and valour, Thou art in desire. Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemed to be all of them blood, and live a coward in thine own esteem? Peace, I dare thee more than they become a man who dares do more is another. What beast was then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than man. I have given some, and know how tender it is to love a babe that lives with me. I would, by the smiling up into my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless gums and dashed the brains out as I should have sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail. <laughs> Will 
Receive when we have marked with blood the two of his own chamber, and use their very dagger that they had done it. Who dares receive another when we shall make our griefs and clamour roar upon his death? Away, do not decline your very show. His face must hide, his heart doth know. Not of them, yet, when we've been treated now to serve and spend it in the time and the hour, if, if you would run the time. Are you kind of pleasure? If you shall plead to my consent, then it is, that you may come. So I lose now, seeking to augment this vote, to be my welcome franchise and the people's clear. Shall we count? Good. Repose a while. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight of a foul for the dagger of the mind. All this creation proceeding from the heat oppressive brain. I see thee yet! Before this path towards this, which now I draw. Now, my shoes to the way that I was going. Such an instrument I was to use. I see thee still. Blade of dudgeon gouts of blood, which was not so there before. There's no such thing. Now, over the one half world, nature seems dead. A wicked dream of the view, the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings and withered Merlin. Alarmed by the sentinel, the wolf who <laughs> his watch thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides, towards his design, like a ghost. <laughs> and sure and 
fun, said I. You know my step from which way they walk. I feel a very stern to preach with my whereabouts at the present. From the time, I cannot seize of it. Of course, I fret, he lives words to the heat of deed to cold breath gives. Lies in the second chamber. Donald Bain. Sorry, sir. A foolish thought to say sorry, sir. Consider it not so deeply. These deeds must not be thought out of these ways. So it will make us mad. If thought I had a voice cry, sleep no more. But Beth thought mad asleep, the innocent sleep, the sleep that lifts up the rampant sleep of care, the death of each day's life. She nourish her a great life's peace. What do you mean? Still, it cried, sleep no more. Long stop murder sleep. Corner shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them, and smear the sleeping crews with blood. No more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again, I dare not. Give me the daggers. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. How is it with me when every noise appalls me? God, his hands. Pluck out my eyes. It will all break Neptune's oceans, wash this blood clean from my hands. No, this my hand, rather than what the tune of seas in Carnadine. Making the green ones red. My hands are of more colour, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking. Retire me to our chamber, and the water clears us of the deed. Hark! More knocking. Put on your nightgown, lest occasion call us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. Duncan, with thy knocking, I wish thou couldst. Ah! Oh. knocking indeed. If a man thought of her way, he should have old time the kid. Knock, knock! Who is there in the name of Beelzebub? I hope you have napkins enough about you that you'll sweat for it. Knock, knock! Who is there in 
The other devils. What's his name? I don't know. Faith is an equivocator that could swear on each scale against either scale. <laughs> you could commit treason enough for God's sake, but could not equivocate to heaven or come in equivocator. Yay, nay. Nay. <laughs> Thou shalt stay there. Enjoy the show. I wish. I wish I could. <laughs> ah, knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, here is an English sailor. Come hither for stealing out of a French hose. <laughs> oh, come in, sailor. Come, come in. You can bring your drink too if you wish. Look at that coat. Very good for winter. Very good for winter. <laughs> now, I uh, think you may go to your roofs. Knock, knock. Never at rest. Why are you? But this place is too cold for hell. I. Hey, Taylor, I need help with my vestments. <laughs> now, put that in, in there. It's delicate. Hey, it's not broken. It's not broken. I, I, I swear. We are nearly there. We are nearly there. Oh. Thy knocking shall wait but one more moment. <laughs> uh, nay, nay, I shall do it myself. Voila! Voila, English tailor. Oh, that was a portrait, no further. I had thought. I had thought to let in some of all professions that go to primrose ways to the everlasting bonfire. I know, I know. I'm not being had away with them. Did he come? Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, brother. Is thy master's errand well, you then? Not yet. He did command me to call upon him timely, and I have almost set the hour. I'll read it to them. I know it's a joyful trouble to you, but yet it's one. Love and pain and physic between the lives. This is the door. I'll be so bold to call. This is my limited service. Knows the king, Mr. Eck? He does. He did appoint me so. The night has been unruly. Lamentings heard in the air, strange shrieks of death. An obscure bird hammered the light upon that. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. It was a rough night. Horror, horror, horror. Time nor hard came to deceive, nor name thee. What's the matter? Sacrilegious murder hath broke out the Lord's anointed temple and so led to the very life of the building. What is it? Do you say the lie? In your majesty, approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Bid me not speak. See, and then speak yourself. Awake! Awake! Murder and treason, ring the alarms! Malcolm and Donovan, back home! Awake! Rise from thy drowsy sleep, death's counterfeit, and look upon death itself! Up of the sea! The Greek doom's image, back home, die of pain. As from your graves to wake up, a war place breaks to counter into this horror. What's the news, Speak, speak. Yes, lady, our royal master. No man's life has been trusted with this. 
And since you repented me of my fury, that I did kill them. What was it you say? Here they dunk me. His silken skin laced with his golden hair. His gashed out like a breach in nature. There, there the murderers, steeped in the colours of their trade, their daggers unmannerly to reach of gore. Who could refrain? Help me! Hands! Who to the lady? Why do we hold our tongues when most may claim this argument for ours? What should we hope in here where our fate hidden in all the whole may rush and seize us? Let the way our tears are not yet through, nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Chief guest. Tonight we have a solemn supper, sir, and we'll refresh your presence. Right you, Miss Archie. Hi, my lord. Would have else as I could good advice. Is it far you right? As far, my lord, but there's little time to it's now supper. They are not our feast. My lord, I will. Who's feels for you? Uh, I'm my lord, the time is full of money. I wish it was as swift as sure of it. So I command you to their backs. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time. For seven at night, for be with you. To be thus is nothing. To be safely thus. Father, big is in banquet, sleep deep. And in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. There are none but he whose being I do fear. Under him, my genius is rebuked. He bade the weird sisters when first they placed the name of king upon my head and bade them speak to him. They hailed him father to a lion of king, placed Cooper's crown on my head, but with a barren scepter in my grip. No son of mine succeeding, for then the gracious Duncan had I murdered to make them kings. The seed of Banquo's kings. Who's there? It was not yesterday we spoke together. It was, so please, my lord. Well then, now have you considered of my speeches? You made it known to us. I did. I went further, which is now the point of our second meeting. We are men, my liege. Aye, in the catalogue he go for men. And I'll put that business in your bosoms, whose execution takes your enemy off. Grapples the heart and love of us, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my lord, but above its doom despise the world. What I do despite the world. And I another. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, my lord. So he yeah. is mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against the nearest of life. Hence it is. I do make love to your assistance. You shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Though our lives they... The spirits shine through you. Within the hour of most, I will advise you where to place yourselves. Acquaint you with the spy of the time, for on it, for it must be done tonight. Leons, his son, that keeps in company, must endure the fate of that dark, Hour! Resolve yourself and path, I'll come to you anon. We are resolved, my lord. I'll call to you straight, by the wind. Banquo. No soul's flight. If it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Oh. 
my destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do ye deny the sorry fancy your companions make him? Seeing without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself. And in our poor manners, we remain in fear of her former tomb. Besides, Duncan is in his grave. Treason has done its worst. Nor steel, nor poison, nor malice domestic, nor foreign legging. Nothing, nothing can harm him further. Come now, gentle, my lord. Sleep o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial for our guests tonight. Who shall I love? And so I pray, be you, that your remembrance of thy banquo may bring our hearts visits to our faces, disguising must, what they are. You must leave this. Full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banco and his son Fleons live. But in their nature's copies, not eternal. Let's comfort. Yet, they are assailable. Yet the bat have flown his voice of flight that shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck. Thou implore the deed. Come, sealing night. Scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day with thy bloody and invisible hand. Pencil and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Life thickens, but hold me still. Things may bad the gun, have themselves strong by ill. O oh, pity, go with me. Which should you have done this? What I could do? Cast off, say I did it. Never shake thy glory locks at me! Gentlemen, right, your highness is not well. Sit! Worthy friend, I pray you keep seat. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought he will again be well. If much you know to you shall offend him and extend his passion. Feed! Regard him not! Are you a man? Old one that dare knock on that which might fool the devil. Proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Shame itself, why do you make such faces when all is said and done you look but on a stone? Look! Behold! See there! How canst you once say I? Thou canst not speak, do! Be 
this one to go. More. I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend Banquo, who we miss, would he were here. To all in him we thirst, and all to all. The fond to quit my sight, to the earth hide thee, thy bones are married, and thy blood is cold. Times I will to the weird sisters. What shall they speak for now? I am, I am bent to know by the by the worst mean. The worst! I have in blood stepped so far. Strange things I have had in head that will to hand must must be acted on here, they may be scanned. speeches have but hit your thoughts. The gracious Duncan was pitied. On that bed, Larry, he was dead. For oh, you, you may say if it please you, for we are to bed, men must not walk too late. But peace, for from broad words and cause he failed his presence at the tyrant's feast. I hear. Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir? Will you tell me where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan lives in the English court. Philip Macduff has gone to pray the holy king upon his aid to wake Northumberland and warlike Seward. And this report hath so exasperated that he came, that he prepares for some account of war and sent you to Macduff. Well, his message here he come, that a swift blessing may soon return to our country, suffering under a hand accursed. I'll send my prayers with him. Thank you. 
anticipate my dread exploits. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon the fire, give to the edge of the sword. His wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his life. Though boasting like a fool, this deed will be done before my purpose call. But <laughs> no more sights. Where are these gentlemen? Bring me before them.
and they use medicine to operate the revenge to cure this deadly grief. He had no children! Oh, you did say Oh, did you say that? Oh, my pretty chickens are never out. One fell swoop. Spit it like a man! I shall do so! One is also feeling like a man! Two nights watched with you, yet perceived no truth in your reports. When was it you said she lost hope? No, here she comes. This is her guide. And upon my mouth, fast asleep, observe her. Get close. How can you find that by? It is by her side continually. It is her command. You see it's not away.
English parents in here is that my balcony is on the scene and the river is on. The range is burning them. But the dear causes, which the bleeding and the river are, excite the mortified man. The abandoned woods should be well needed. That way they are. Some say he's strongly fortified. Some say he's a gnat. Other than that, I hate to do call it valiant fury. But for certain, he cannot buckle his distempered cord under his belt of rule. Now does he feel his secret murders sticking on his hand? Now does he feel his title hang loose about him like a giant rope upon a dwarfish thief? We then shall blame his best attempts to recall him stars. All that is within him to condemn itself for being there. Well, march we on to give obedience where it is truly owed. Well, so much as it needs to do the sovereign flower and drown the weed. Make we our march towards Burnham. Bring me no more reports, let them fly over. For Burnham would have moved to Dunsinane, I cannot taint with fear. Was this boy Malcolm, was he not born of woman? Pronounce me thus. Fear not, for no man that's born a woman shall ever have power upon thee. Then fly, false fames, and mingle with the English epicure. The mind I swipe by, and the heart I bear, shall never sag with doubt, nor shake with fear. The devil down thee black, thou creep face, where goest thou, goose look? There is ten thousand. Geese, villain, soldiers, sir. Go. Bring thy face, and over red thy fear, thou lady livid boy. But then, what soldiers, Patch? What soldiers, wait face? The English force, so please. Take thy face, hence. Lennox! I am sick at the heart when I behold. Lennox, I say, I have lived long enough. My life has fallen into the sea. I cannot do with it now. But love, obedience, shoots of friends. Love, honour, Lennox! What, what is your gracious pleasure? What news, Lord? All that's been reported has been confirmed, sir. I'll fight to prove my bones, my flesh be hacked. Give me my armour. Oh, it is not me. I'll yes. put it on. Send out all horses. Stir the country round. Hang anyone that talks of fear. Give me my armour! How much your patient, Doctor? Not so sick, my lord. <laughs> She's troubled with fit coming fancies. She all have with that, canst thou not minister to a mind disease, cleanse the stuffed bosom with that perilous stuff which weighs upon the heart? Here is the patient, must minister to himself. Throw physics to the dog, I'll none of it! Give me my armor. No, no, no. Give me my staff. Let us just send out. I, my good lord! I'll go no more. I'll not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. Were I from Dunsinane away unclear, from it again would hardly draw me here. Cousins, I hope the days near at hand that chains will be saved. We doubt it nothing. What would it live before us? Let every soldier who can now bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the members of our host and make a discovery ere we report of us. It shall be done. We learn no other but the confident tyrant keeps still in Duncan Aid and will endure our fucking down for us, as it may be. For where there is advantage to be taken, both more and less have given him the revolt, and none serve with him but come strange things whose hearts are out of two. Let by your senses attend our true event, and make of us industrious soldiers. <laughs> the time approaches that shall with due decision make us know what we shall say we have and what we owe. Thought speculative that unsure hopes were late, but certain issue strokes must arbitrate. Towards which advance the war! I art our banners on the outer walls, the cry is still they come. Our castle's strength will laugh the siege to scorn. Yeah, let them lie, for the famine and the agony beat them up. Will they not force with that which should be ours? We would have met them therefore, fear to fear, and beat them back with home. I have almost got the taste of this. I 
diet stuff. Ooh, with porridge. Diet is familiar to my slaughterous thoughts. Can at once stop me. Where for was I cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. Bear like I must fight the cause. Are they not born of woman? Such am I to fear. From none. What is thy name? Thou be afraid to hear it. No. So thou callest thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name is Macbeth. Yeah. <laughs> 
scorn, brandished by that of the woman born. The way that noise is! Thou hast been slain by no stroke of mine. My wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. I cannot strike a wretched kind. Either thou look death, or else my sword, with an unbattered edge, shall be sheathed again undeeded. Thou shalt be there by this great platter, one of greatest notes is bruised. Let me fight in fortune. And more than they not. This way, my lord, the castle is gently rendered. The tyrants of people on both sides do fight. The noble thanes do bravely in the war. The day almost as some professors yours, there is little to do. We have met with those that strike the shadows. Enter, sir, the castle. Why should I bear the Roman fool and die a wine of the sword? What icy I see lines and gashes do better upon them? Turn, O Ham! Turn! The woman else I have avoided thee, but get thee back! Thy sword is too much charged with the blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is my sword, thou bloodier villain, than terms can give thee out! <laughs> Why then? God's soul 
such a being. I should not wish him to a fairer death, and so his knell is naught. He's worth more sorrow than that I'll spare it on. He's worth no more. They say he parted well and paid his score. So God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. Time is free. I see thee compassed with thy kingdom's powers, and whose salutations speak in their minds, and voices I desire aloud with mine. Oh, hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King of Scotland! 